think it's pretty difficult for the smaller players to mm -hmm. get into this market because those big players have really, um, you know, they've got attracted all the funding, like at millions and billions of dollars. Now we can actually use open source tools, which are free mm. to make by South Africa for South Africa, by Africans mm. for Africans, by Kenyans for Kenyans, by yeah. Nigerians for Nigeria, by Botswanas for Botswana. You know, we often say, um, you know, AI, AI is not going to replace your job or it's going to replace you, but um, people who learn AI faster than you do is going to replace yeah. you. Hi everyone, and welcome back to IT Web TV. Today we have another exciting and amazing episode for you guys. Joining me today are my two guests from the African Academy of Artificial Intelligence. We've got co-founder Greg Sarandos and head of talent Quinton Jacobs. So Greg and Quinton, welcome to our show and thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having us. Of course, and can you just sort of to introduce yourself to the viewers Give us a short background of who you are, how you've gotten to where you are, and of course, all about the African Academy of Artificial Intelligence. Well, thank, thank you for having us. So it's, it's good to be here. Uh, my name is Greg Sarandos. I'm from California. I've been in South Africa on and off for 20 years, mm. um, coming out of telecommunications, um, then into public relations and marketing. Uh, we founded um, the African Academy of Artificial Intelligence, or AAAI as we call it, uh, in 2022. We provide training and education to African SMEs and up into the corporate uh, level. We have a close affiliation or partnership with the Gibbs Business School, where we run a number of programs. At this stage, we've trained we've trained more than a thousand people, uh, both in open programs, uh, not just in South Africa, but also in Kenya, Zimbabwe, West Africa, and one or two others. Um, so, yeah, it's quite an extensive reach that you guys have you guys have over there. And Quinton, can you just tell us more about what you guys offer at Triple AI and sort of what is the target market and what are you guys doing around teaching people in terms of AI? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, the Triple AI, I think, is a, is an exciting vision that we have uh, in terms of teaching people in, in South Africa and it's uh, not just businesses, but uh, sometimes even, you know, small business or entrepreneurs how to implement AI and how to leverage AI to improve their businesses. And um, so, so what we do is we basically train a, uh, a lot of people, but we also have a consulting side of the business where we literally take that training and help um, businesses implement and hold their hand through the process of, of bringing AI into, into uh, their organization. And looking in terms of adoption and integration of AI, when it comes to businesses, especially in South Africa, do you guys think there is a wide acceptance of using AI or is there still a bit of skepticism around the tech? Yeah, I, th I think you're quite right because they, there's both. Um, I think it, in, in certain um, areas and certain niches, there's a, a quick ad adoption where the, the advantages are obvious. Mm. So especially in the marketing field, People quickly uh, no noted that you can, you know, write, do your copywriting and you can create some images and maybe mm -hmm. even with some video editing. That's easy for for people to to adopt and and take on. But some of the more advanced uh, functionalities of AI, like for instance analytics or mm -hmm. research and that sort of stuff, people are a little bit more hesitant to get into it. And when it comes to teaching, of course, I know you target SMEs and big organizations. Do you think it's easier to get those people who have probably been, you know, running businesses for a long time? Do you think they're easier to teach or do you think they're more hard headed? Yeah, I think it's the old uh, sort of thing and about teaching mm. uh, somebody is you must, uh, if they don't realize there's a problem that they need to solve, then the teaching is a little bit more difficult. But so, the, so it's always a good starting point for us to find the prob when people have problems or they, um, you know, the issues that they have within their business, and then talk about the AI solving those problems, then you get that adoption a, a lot quicker because they you've kind of developed an appetite mm. uh, with them uh, to to want to learn. And what are some of the tools and solutions that you guys um, use to teach AI for 
businesses and organizations? Yeah, there, there's so many. As, as you know, AI in the last year has really exploded. Uh, AI has been around, you know, since the 1950s, I think. Um, but but um, in the last year, it's really come to to light with the with the development of generative AI. Hmm. So there's the different levels of AI with machine learning and deep learning. But now, it's specifically in generative AI, is where it's become so much more functional mm. because it's a language model, and b b you can literally speak to the AI yeah. in instead of writing code or or something like that. So I think in the last year, it's it's really sort of exploded. So um, there's so many tools out there that that people have got. The big one, obviously, was ChatGPT, which started off the whole revolution yeah. or evolution. And um, uh, quickly followed by other, um, you know, large language models like Google Bard, uh, uh, Gem, um, which is now Gemini, it's going into Gemini, uh, Bing, as well as Claude, and all of those sort of large language models, which are, I think the, is the starting point, is the basis. And then around that, a lot of people have developed um, applications yeah. using ch uh, the, the large language models, basically putting wrappers around uh, the large language models and then uh, creating specific applications to fu uh, for certain functions. So if you're just thinking inside of a bu business, you know, there's applications for the accounting department, there's one for the, you know, uh, the IT department, there's one for marketing. Well, there's plenty of those. And they've, they, they've really sprung up all over the place. So the difficulty is is not to find them, but is, but is to sift through all of them mm. and finding the right ones. And that's where I think we, we also help a lot with those sort of things. In coming up with the recommendation, we do the testing, and we can tell tell people which ones are the are the best. And Greg, just to dive a bit deeper into the AI landscape, um, I mean it's early twenty twenty four now, mm -hmm. but do you, do you think we've seen a shift in the AI landscape, or are we still on the same path? I think we're. I think on a scale of one to ten, we're probably at two, mm -hmm. maybe at, maybe at three, um, on an individual level. People are adopting ChatGPT to help them with their writing, help mm. them with their designing, help them with their video production. Um, but at an organizational level, I think it's still early days. There's some very tricky, um, tricky regulatory risk, IP risk, um, data data protection risks that are out there that that cause executives to say, "Wait, well, wait a minute! Mm. Uh, before we get we, before we dive in, maybe we should put put our toes in." So the, the smart companies are picking. Um, very specific use cases, yeah. and this you know, working on that, automating those processes, whatever it might be. And of course, um, you've got the big players in AI, yes. your Microsoft and your Googles. Mm -hmm. Is there maybe some smaller players who are making quite big moves that no one is not um, paying attention to just yet? I think it's pretty difficult for the smaller players to mm -hmm. get into this market because those big players have really, um, you know, they've got attracted all the funding, like it millions and billions of dollars of, of funding there that's coming into it. So to compete against that is pretty hard. Mm. Plus, if you're competing against a Google or a Microsoft or those sort of things, it's tough. But the, the opportunity for entry is really for those those companies to develop niche uh, applications. And, and like I said earlier, you know, leverage off the, the large language models. Not everybody has to develop a large language model. They, they, it's more about using those models to, to, to create specific use cases for specific industries, for specific yeah. people, that type of thing. Okay, let's yeah. dive into South Africa and where we are in right. terms of AI. Do you think we're making the right strides or are we just totally trying to ignore AI? Yeah, I think AI is a massive opportunity for South Africa or even Africa to, to you know, cross the, the divide, to, yeah. to narrow the, the gap. With the, with the rest of the world. and uh, But I think it's still not being utilized um, properly. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, uh, especially if you think about the, the, the maybe from the government side or it, the, the formal institutions, the education departments, maybe not grasping that opportunity just yet. Mm -hmm. So in the private sector, yes, I think there's a, a lot of people are adopting that. Um, but it's uh, it's it's gonna, gonna have to come from a broader institution. So, I, the overall answer, I don't think not yet. I think it, it will come, but it's it's unfortunately a little bit too slow. Yeah. If this if it is the opportunity that we say it is, then there should be all hands on deck really about AI. 
Yeah, and you know, Greg, um, you guys work with educating people in terms of this new technology that yes. we've got. Do you think that South Africa is in a unique position to start education in terms of AI from a basic level, which is in schools and in universities, or do you think we should just jump into teaching those who are already established? Yeah, we're we're in the business of um, of um, of working with companies and mm. and employees on skilling them up yeah. for the next generation. So the, the and the way the world the history has worked with massive innovations. If you think about the printing press, if you think yeah. about um, electricity, think about automobiles. There's always been um, job destruction, mm -hmm. but those jobs have always been replaced by more yeah. higher paying jobs than those that they're replacing. So automobiles, uh, Henry Ford, uh, Model T, 1920s. By 1930, there was no more horses. Mm. Right. Um, the biggest I industry in the world in 1930 was. Do you know what it is? No. Whaling. Oh. And not for the not for the food, but for the oil. Oh. The heat, the propane, the, the what we would call propane lamps now, and then and then uh, Thomas Edison, and within eighteen months, whaling was was uh, in this industry that was entirely destroyed. Yeah. But now automobiles, excluding the energy side, in my country, in the U.S. and in Europe, is twenty five percent of all is of all of all jobs hmm. are peripheral or directly provided by the automobile sector. The, the trick with, with AI is it's coming so fast is that the jobs can be destroyed at a much faster pace than people can be reskilled. Yeah. Right. And, and, and so, I mean, I think, I think all, all country at the national level, all, most countries, all countries that I've looked at are too slow. Mm -hmm. They're not taking this, this job destruction thing seriously at yeah. all. Um, and this country is no different. So, so, you know, you can talk about presidential commissions and, and those kind of, you know, almost theoretical initiatives, but they also have public-private partnerships with Harambe. Mm. Um, IT Web had an article about that in September in Brainstorm. Um, um, yes, the youth employment services. Mm. So that kind of those kind of things are happening now. Yeah. Now, what happens in schools is much more complicated mm. because there's two sides of the same coin. I'm not sure the education leaders in government schools in the K through 12 are really understanding how do we use how do we stop children from using chat gpt to cheat yeah but then how do we teach them the skills so that they're employable uh, when they turn 18 19 years old yeah no that's true and i think greg you have mm -hmm. a unique standpoint where you've seen the western and the southern hemisphere yeah. in terms of ai but you look at south africa and we've got some unique well some might say unique societal challenges i mean we've got the terrible unemployment rate yes we've got obviously the escom issue as well do you think those sort of issues could be solved by AI? I think in terms of services, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I think with the right leadership and the right strategy, um, jobs can be created, um, companies can be created, SMEs have a unique opportunity to overcome structural disadvantages they've had vis-a-vis -vis, uh, corporations. For example, um, and I'm talking from a European and American point of view, but the same thing happened here. Global financial crisis. Mm -hmm. It was a banking crisis caused by the, Amer the American, primarily the American banks. The American banks were rescued. Yeah. Four million small businesses went under mm -hmm. and millions of people lost their jobs. The banks were bailed out and the, and the others weren't. Yeah. Right. Come on, come COVID. If I'm, if I'm in South Africa, the supermarkets stay open, but if I'm in, if, if I'm an independent tuck shopper or independent retailer, I'm shut down. Yeah. They tell me I can't sell, I can't sell um, open-toed shoes because they're non-essential. Yeah. Right. So all these things have have really made life very difficult for SMEs. Mm. But what can happen with AI? I have a marketing department, small business. I'm a marketer. I'm a writer. So your marketing manager is either a writer, a designer, or an internet marketer, mm -hmm. like 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 Quinton is in terms of our core skills. Um, in three months, that writer can also do the design, can also do the internet marketing, and they can also do st stuff that big corporations do, but small businesses don't normally have the yeah. the funding or the skills to do. Research, insights, analytics. Mm. That one person can do all five of those jobs. Before, they would send those that work out to agencies or yeah. freelancers or not do it at all. Yeah. Now we have an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Same in accounting, same in um, writing contracts, same in procurement. Hmm. Supply chain, all those kind of things. A small business can actually adopt 
because the more agile AI tools to improve the productivity. AI, we have to understand, has three main benefits. First of all, you have clean data coming in. Mm-hmm. If you don't have clean clean data, you can't use AI, right? And I'm not talking about spreadsheets and documents. It's all it's those things, but it's also photography, video, and those kind of things, yeah. right? So the the clean data can be used. Put it through the AI. It does either improves the quality, mm-hmm. improves productivity, or it was personalization. And the personalization is why it's a little lagging behind because it's more challenging. Yeah. And those are the opportunities for for small businesses in South Africa and throughout the continent. And in terms of successfully using AI or implementing it, are there some examples of businesses that you've seen in SA use AI and are doing amazing things with it? AWS is quietly the, probably the best AI company in the world. Mm-hmm. They have the cloud and they have they have their, a big portfolio of you know, large corporations, banks, insurance companies, manufacturers, mining, and all that kind of stuff. And they put their their products in, they put their services into, say, co- contact centers. Mm-hmm. And within five words, they can do a sentiment analysis. Mm. That's powerful. Yeah. So you think about a, a small company or medium-sized company that has maybe 20 contact center agents, they can't afford a sentiment analysis. They can't afford, you know, kind of the customer experience analysis and those yeah. kind of things, so the after the, the after call surveys and those kind of things. But AWS can put a, put their stuff in hmm. uh, conceivably and you have sentiment analysis, you know, exactly how your customers feel. Contact center says, hello, may I help you? And you know, um, and then you know yeah. within five words, happy, sad, angry, yeah. press for time, want to chit chat, mm-hmm. whatever it might be. Yeah. So those are powerful applications mm-hmm. that can be applied for small businesses and big businesses. But typically, the big companies will have contract long-term contracts with the big contact center vendors. Yeah. So it might be two or three, you know, years before they can switch over. If that makes sense. Yeah, you know, that, that does make sense. And I mean, any of you two can answer this question. I know AI is fun, and developing it and seeing it grow has yeah. been, for me personally, quite a a fun and interesting experience. Yeah. But obviously, there are some regulations and ethical implications when it comes to any new technology, if we're being honest. But this one specifically seems to be gathering a lot of much more, I can say, negative press yes. than most other new technologies that mm-hmm. we've seen. So what are some of the, especially in South Africa, if we're speaking, what are some of the ethical or regulatory implications that we might see once South Africa really gets into AI? We did a forum at Gibbs Business School at the end of November, and I put up a survey. It says, what are your biggest concerns with AI? It was a leadership forum. Yeah. And we're getting to is a rabbit hole mm-hmm. that, that really becomes a distraction, mm-hmm. right? So is it IP protection and data protection, or is it bias of the of the LL, LLM models? Mm-hmm. Is it mass job losses? What are some of the other ones, Quentin? It's, well, it's afraid of losing your job. Yeah, and ultimately it's it's... Mass layoffs and really losing my job, those are my biggest concerns, right? Yeah. But the rabbit hole that the leadership has to face in at the government level and at the corporate level is, is you know, what, what, what can we do to get this thing from running away from us? Bias is a really important one because yeah. you have to think about where the, the, how these LLMs, how these large language models are being trained. They're being yeah. trained by, um, they send out Common Crawl, which is a service that goes out and scrapes the internet. And who were the biggest you know, suppliers of the data? New York Times is number three, or top three. It's in the U.S. is Wikipedia, or in terms of uh, open AI, it's Wikipedia, U.S. United States Patent Office for for uh, for patents, yeah. and the New York Times, and um, and the Guardian is number seven. Mm-hmm. And both of those are left wing in media organizations, mm-hmm. right? It's fun. I don't doesn't. So if you ask a question, how do I split an atom? We get kind of a, a pretty straight answer. Yeah. Tell me about nuclear fusion. I get a pretty, I get a pretty you know, standard answer. Whose fault is the war in Gaza? That's a different one. That's where the bias comes in. Yeah, and that's where and it's also hallucinations, which is another issue. Yeah, and that's where bias becomes very complex. What's the source of the data? Let's talk about um, Zulu history. Yeah, history of King Shaka. Mm-hmm. Who's who's right? Who's right? Who's who's data are they using? Are they using the Zulu um, academic who's got good English skills so he did the translation, mm-hmm. he or she did the translations into English or is it an English historian that knows a lot about Zulu culture? You're yeah. getting very different, subtle. It's yeah. all about subtlety. 
you get very different answers. Mm. So those are t- two kinds kinds of examples of how bias works. Yeah. And, you know, of course, as you were speaking about bias and everything, um, I remember one expert I spoke to said South Africa is in a unique position when it comes to developing AI for South Africans. Yes. Is that we can sort of remove all of that bias before we put whatever we put into the machine. Do you think we should be taking advantage of that? Absolutely. And there's there's been new developments um, in the European AI Act regulations. It, it was leaked. Surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> the, the regulations were leaked. But what they're going to do is they're going to say, okay, your, um, your Google, your OpenAI, your Anthropic, which is cloud, you're, you have a, and it's, it's closed modeling, right? Yeah. So you're, you're, you're going to have to follow all these strict regulations. Mm-hmm. But if you're open source and you give it away for free, mm. and open source means collaboration amongst the developers, yeah. then those regulations are basically waived. Mm. Now, that's a huge thing for South Africa because you think about, okay, we're not in the European Union. Yeah. But anything you do that touches the European Union, you have to comply with, mm. right? The UK, which is a very small country relative to the world, mm. um, killed off the, um, what was it, the Adobe. Mm. So Adobe Adobe acquired Figma for $20 billion, whatever it was, and the UK said no. So then the European Union said, well, we kind of kind of agree, but we're on the, we're on the fringe, the, the U.S., had approved it, mm. so they had to kill off the whole deal. Wow. So anything that happens here, really, the, the European AI Act actually touches here, yeah. if that makes sense. So with open source, now we say, okay, cool. Now we can actually use open source tools, which are free, mm. to make by South Africa for South Africa, by mm. Africans for Africans, by Kenyans for Kenyans, by yeah. Nigerians for Nigeria, by Botswanas for Botswana, right? Yeah. By you know, Zimbabweans for Zimbabwe. Mm. And that's 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 very exciting to me. Yeah. Of how that plays out. Because you can build your own models yeah. based on your own data sets. And in terms of um, basically all uh, South Africa specific, I mean, we've got the Papier Act, which protects our personal information. And I know that's one of the most important things when it comes to AI is privacy and security. Yes. Does it keep you private or will it just go into computer and all of a sudden it knows who your aunt's name is and all of that? So do you think having a regulatory framework like the Papier Act mm. gives us an, a sort of a leg up when it when we will eventually start to develop these open source for Africans by Africans AI tools and mm-hmm. solutions? So there's, from a regulatory point of view, and mm. I, I, I kind of go back to my tel- telecoms experience yeah. and comp- competitive strategy. If you have weak regulations and no regulations mm. versus you have heavy regulations and government control. Mm. Um, the first one, where there's little regulation, it, it van- advantages small businesses and innovators yeah. and entrepreneurs. And, and, and that's, that's the environment. But if you have strong regulations, it advantages the large corporations. Yeah, That's why it has such strong banking regulations in the U.S. That's probably not such a great example. Strong telecommunications regulations in South Africa makes it very difficult for entrepreneurs to build businesses around around the sector. Yeah. I don't think regulations are really going to help. I think the the market's going to decide. Mm. And I don't think these regulations, in, including Papia, are at all enforceable. Mm. Like as, a, as, as small businesses, of course, we're not going to spam people. We're not going to violate yeah. people's privacy. But if we did, there'd be no, there'd be no, there's no ramifications, yeah. there's no consequences in doing so. It's only consequences if you're a large corporation or, or if you're the government itself. Mm. That makes sense. So yeah. I think it's going to be a very, very difficult thing to regulate. And Quinton, just to go back to you, um, of course, you tell SMEs and businesses why they should integrate AI into their organizations. Just speaking to people who probably want to start a new business or are getting into a company where they feel like maybe AI could help us speed up some of the processes, why should they choose AI? Yeah, I, I think we're at the we've basically seen the tip of the iceberg of what AI is is is, is capable of mm. and what it will be, and it's going to literally just speed up. So the the first one is you know um, the, if you you don't want to get left behind, um, you know it's AI is kind of a no brainer to adopt in your business. Some of the the, the more fun stuff that that you said is 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 obviously. Um, you know, it can help you create better quality mm. social media posts, which will increase your audience and um, and you know and just the productivity and in, in terms of, of of creating that stuff. 
but definitely in terms of looking forward, um, uh, you know, th- this uh, this snowball has just st- uh, started getting momentum. Yeah, and and I and I do think we, you know, we often say, um, you know, AI, AI is not going to replace your job or it's going to replace you, but um, people who learn AI faster than you do is going to replace yeah. you. So so that's where why I do think you know without having sort of to, to, to focus on the negative side or the fear side of it, um, you know, but there's also the positive aspect of it. it it's really going to change not not just our everyday life, but also our, our job lives and the things, the way we do it and the way the processes that companies follow is going to radically change over the next year. In fact, jobs, it's, uh, certain jobs itself is going to, uh, either not exist anymore, or it is is going to uh, change form. And and like Greg was saying earlier, that one person in the organization could probably fulfill three or four different roles uh, just using the AI tools. And you know, there's been a lot of big layoffs from big tech companies um, beginning of this year. And of course, everyone is scared AI is going to take my job, or oh my gosh, I'm going to be replaced by a machine. Um, do you think it is better to teach people? that AI is not necessarily going to take your job, but it's going to create maybe multiple other jobs around the one that you're doing? Or is it better to just say, learn AI and hope for the best? Yeah, I, I think it, it's a it's a dual responsibility. It's not just the company, uh, your company that you work for. It's not just their responsibility to teach you, but it's your own responsibility as well. I think each person should take on the responsibility to to learn things themselves even if it maybe doesn't benefit you right this second or right this minute, um, just get into the water and you know and see where it takes you. So I think um, education is obviously a, a very important uh, aspect of um, of this. But uh, the the companies they obviously need to invest yeah. in education and train people because again uh, you know people are, are going to move around and if your company is very strict and saying you're not allowed to use chat gpt mm. then uh people are going to go where they are allowed to use yeah. it and uh where they can do the same amount of work in one hour what normally takes people a week to do mm. and you know 2024 for south africans is an election year and we've seen um obviously a lot of new parties pop up out of the ground and we've seen some established ones try and sort of get their foot in and try and win more votes do you think with the country looking to choose probably a new party to lead, should South African politicians be focusing on technology and AI? And will the AI affect how we are going to proceed with the elections? Absolutely. I, th- I think like the same way social media had an impact, mm. uh, you know, 10 years ago with Barack Obama being stronger in, in social media and having a strategy with it. Uh, and then uh, Donald Trump with the same thing, uh, you know, using the media and social media in a more aggressive way. I think AI, the same way in South Africa, is also going to play a role. So um, both positives and negatives again. Mm. The positives, obviously, it's going to um, allow people to be educated yeah. about the, the issues and uh, depending on where your, your, your source information comes from. But, um, you know, the essence of AI actually in a way democratizes information so people can get uh, access to information a lot easier Mm -hmm. but there's also obviously the negative side of of it uh, being biased Uh, and then the other great danger about ai is um, the creation of uh, fake news Mm -hmm. you know where uh, people are using um, tools to 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 uh, copy or clone other people's voices so I, cl- I clone Cyril Ramaphosa's voice and I make him say things that he never said. Yeah. And 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 even though we think, well, that's silly, I won't fall for that. Mm. I think uh, um, th- it permeates into with on top of social media, then it permeates, and you you know how these these camps develop. And if that's something that you want to hear, yeah. you're going to believe it. Yeah. Um, so so I think that's uh, the deep fake videos. Um, um, I think we've already seen quite a lot of them out there and people laugh and they think, oh, that's fun. Look at the silly things he's, uh, people are saying. But again, those things are going to, there's a lot of elections around the world and I think AI is going to play a massive role this year. Yeah. And this question, you both can please answer it. 
the future. I mean, we want South Africa to get better and we want everyone to be using technology and leveraging AI to make sure that the country moves forward. So what is the AI future that you envision or you could see happening in SA? Yeah, I, th I think the the future, um, as you spoke earlier about opportunities for people, mm. uh, it certainly creates um, opportunities for entrepreneurial kind of people. And we've been saying for years that, uh, that it's the entrepreneurs, it's the small businesses mm. that's going to change South Africa. It's not going to come from the government. It's not going to come from large businesses, but that's really the growth opportunity. And this is what uh, AI is all about, is empowering people uh, to, to uh, you know, to, uh, to do things better mm. and to, and to pr produce more quality work. Yeah. And uh, and even just uh, empowering a uh, a small business or an entrepreneur to mm. write a contract yeah. where they normally uh, would go to a lawyer and or they wouldn't even be able to afford a lawyer or mm. something like that. So so a great opportunity for the entrepreneurial sector uh, sector. I think that that AI is providing. And then, as I said earlier, in terms of competing with international players, mm. just a quick example on 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 that. A lot of a big barrier always has been language, mm. and you know to crack an international market, if you don't has an accent like Greg has got, you, you know you probably can't get into the American market. Or well, that's how we feel, you know, yeah. as South Africans, we feel like, oh, but I, you know, I, I speak funny and yeah. I can't do it. Now with an uh, AI model, you could literally use any uh, accent that you want mm. or any voice that you want to to create. Uh, personas and uh, you know to crack certain audiences globally. So I think we we've got a great opportunity to start competing globally. Yeah, and Greg, um, from your side, what is the AI future look like for South Africa? Well, I think I think Quinton's made some great points, but to build on that, is that you know if if you're just getting started out, mm -hmm. nobody's applauding you. Yeah. But if you're a major corporation, if you made a success of yourself, everybody's applauding. You have a whole lot of tournament people applauding. Yeah. So, you know, I don't think the corporations really need our need the help of society. Um, on that note, there's lots of jobs around the world that South Africans are fulfilling. Mm. So I spoke to, we spoke to one person this morning. He's a Google Ads expert. Um, I have a friend that I worked with before. He's a digital campaign manager. Mm. Both of them have had jobs and now work overseas. They both, they work in the United States. And Americans need this because we don't have enough skills to fulfill the jobs. Mm. Europeans have the same problem. Chinese have the, China has the same problem. They don't have enough people to fulfill the jobs because the demographics are going the wrong way. More the Europeans than the Americans. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities to, for people that skill up mm. um, that they can have, not just, oh, I have to go to work for Standard Bank or if it's not Standard Bank, it's one of the other four banks. There's 200 banks out there that have that need that need people and need skills and for them it's great because south african labor is cheaper than there but here you get paid much more than you would yeah. be paid by a local company so i think that's a, another big opportunity if we think about employment and about creating better lives for south african citizens employees mm -hmm. that's i think i think that's a, a golden egg there and just to sort of round off um our discussion today Please just tell us more about what you guys are planning to do with the Academy in the future, in the near future, and what are the exciting projects that people can look forward to? Yes, um, well, we're building out our, our course modules. Um, we have, a, um, like I said earlier, a, a close associate, a, a partnership with Gibbs Business School. We're building out courses for them. We're building out co um, courses for, um, for companies that can be customized. We're also uh, creating online courses. Our first one was an e-commerce course mm. for um, for retailers and for um, for e-commerce players. Um, that's that's actually in the market now. Our next one will be a marketing course that's integrated with that, and from there we'll just keep, we'll definitely keep building. But as Quentin said earlier, we do strategy opportunities and and uh, leadership. Um, that's an important element because the employees can't determine by themselves yeah. what the skills that they need to do their jobs yeah. and to do their workflows. The company needs actually to, to tell them, you need, if you do these five things, you're good to go. And so I think that there's a leadership issue within the companies, um, and we can help them with that. And Quinton, maybe you can just round off by telling people where they can contact you guys and um, where they can find you, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're available on our, on our website. It's called the AAAI.Africa. So three A's and one I.Africa. <laughs> 
it's uh, pre uh, the dot Africa is the extension, so it's not a dot com. So yeah. that's a, that's that's our website. But also, uh, you can contact us at our email address, uh, info at AAAI dot Africa, uh, if you want to email us. Or uh, we're also on social media. We're, we've got a, f a Facebook group and, and on LinkedIn, obviously, is always a good place to find Greg or myself and, uh, and just st uh, connect with us and start chatting about the AI. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. It was a lovely discussion and I'm sure we'll be happy to have you back anytime soon. Thank you. To our viewers and our subscribers, please do keep watching our show. Like, subscribe, share repost and we'll see you again on IT Web TV.